Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Janelle Denzin. I work for Coalition on Homelessness and Housing in Ohio. I'm the data analyst here. And this is week two of a five week training series um, that we're calling R for HMIS admins. Um, Um, this says co-presenter is Carolyn Hoffman, but she's not actually able to join us today. So I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be, uh, handling the questions today. So I will keep an eye on that, um, and do my best. This is, um, this week we're going to be talking about our studio and, uh, what that is and how that helps with workflow. In week one, I talked about how week one was kind of different than the rest of the weeks in the series in that we were gonna do like some just coding. And then um, starting this week, we're really gonna be just focused on workflow mostly with the idea that um, you'll pick up syntax as you go and as you take more sort of our courses that are out there. So I wanted to hear, um, from folks about uh, the homework, which was the um, sort of the tutorial tab in um, in our studio. Um, I think in the original uh, presentation, I had said just pick one, um, but then like I sort of uh, narrowed it down in in my instructions after that to um, make it the data basics tutorial. So I'm just curious to see if um, people had feedback about that. Um, if you want to raise your hand, I think I can unmute you. Um, otherwise, you can put some stuff in the chat and I can see that. I'm not seeing any hands. And if you weren't able to, to do them, that's okay. Okay, Tino, I think I... Unmuted you, Doug. Okay, I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, you are. I hear you. Sure. So, um, I really enjoyed the uh, the practice. The only problem that I had was getting Tidyverse to can fully install. When I tried the first run the t the tutorial, it kept on uh, kind of halting the execution because I needed uh -huh. other packages, and I ended up figuring out i added a bunch of packages manually i'm sure there has to be a better way that, to do it than the way i did it but I, I did get it to work okay good well yeah i didn't i didn't uh i don't know if, uh, i don't know yeah. if other people had problems or if there was a specific way uh, i mean i seemed like the tutorial was set up so that everything was going to be already installed but in my instance yeah. it wasn't Right. No, I think, yeah, I think you did, you did it right. And it's, it's thinking that if you don't already have these things installed, then you should go do that. Um, but that sometimes um, we need to take, I was, I was going to have you all install Tidyverse for week three's homework, <laughs> but, but apparently that, that already kind of happened. So good. Anybody else? All right. Well, um, if you had any problems and you have any questions that are left over from that, just um, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll re reach back out. Oh, I see a question. Oh, <laughs> um, tutorial tabs, good. Uh, very basic, yep. That's what we're aiming for here. I had to install the tutorial, then it worked twice. Um, Having problems figuring out the comment. Okay, I'm seeing y'all's um, y'all's questions now. So yeah, at first I wasn't. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, it's good to hear that there was some um, some um, some uh, the, the the homework was mostly good. Um, sorry if it it caused some stress, <laughs> um, but just remember I'm available if you need anything. Oh, wait, I skipped a show. <laughs> so um, like I announced last um, in week one, um, two monitors or, or two screens would be ideal for these. But um, 
you you're free to do how you want. Um, and then, yeah, so week one, the recording failed, but I did a redo and that recording is available. Um, I'm gonna start to keep um, all of the things that um, come out of this course here on the, the GitHub page. Um, and it's, it's actually, if you, if you go to the page where without the sort of bookmark thing, it lands you here, but you have to kind of scroll down and then you'll see this, this readme and it'll have all of the information, the recordings, the homework, um, instructions like that. So, and the resources for week two, for instance, are gonna be like here, instead of like putting a document out in the, in the um, chat here. Is anyone hearing me? Can people hear? Oh, someone said they can't hear the presenter. Okay, thanks, Gaber. Okay. So to get to the um, the topic at hand, we're going to talk about our studio. And um, so our studio is an IDE and. Um, there are plenty of IDEs that exist besides our studio. Um, and that like Visual Studio is one, BIM and Emacs are one. Most of them are not super uh, geared to a specific language, um, but our studio is, although you can write Python and some other languages in our studio, um, but I don't have any experience with that, but it's built to um, for the needs of our users. So, so why even so? If our studio is meant to make coding easier, like why even code? Like why not just continue doing what we were doing, um, whatever that might have been? Not making assumptions, but a lot of folks just use um, like Excel and uh, the the reporting tool that's already in your HMI software, um, or you just um, like export sort of already manipulated data and or aggregated, aggregated data into like a visualization software. Um, so like why even do this part, right? So um, the reasons that I've come across, I came to, across some notes actually, um, had to clean out, I cleared out my desk because I um, am working from home a lot now. And so anyway, I found these old notes and this is what was in them. And I felt like it was important to put them here because um, this is a good like um, sort of thing to talk about as to like why we're even doing all this. So the difference then in, in creating, doing a lot of work in a system where, um, it's sort of intuitive, right? And you can click over here and, and put some code in there and then see how that works and then go over here, add some more different kind of code in this other place. And, um, and it seems like easy, but like then when you present that, the only thing that people are seeing is the output and that you can't really inspect it it's also hard to repeat um, as to, you know, if you wanted to rebuild it somewhere else. And it's also hard to reuse. So if you use that type of um, software and you have built, say, as an example, like um, a column that tells with uh, whether a client was uh, chronic. So that's like pretty complicated logic, but we need it <laughs> and our systems, at least the system I use doesn't do that for you. Um, and so you've done this and you wanna don't like not have to do that again every time you need to talk about chronic. Um, so when you write code in, in R or Python or whatever else, you can take that code and, and reuse it somewhere else um, in a pretty um, elegant way. And then the other piece is it's inspectable so that you can look at 
a, the top of a script and see like what libraries you're calling. You can see what what data you're pulling in and where it came from. You can see the first sort of first steps you're taking with that data and then sort of the story of like how you're manipulating that data until the very end to where and then where you're saving it out to. And so it's a, it's inspectable and you can review it better and see what's going on in there. The other piece, and then we're going to talk about this a lot next week, is that it's diffable, which means that you can compare changes to your code over time. And that's that's really a lot to do with what is next week, like I said, um, when we're going to talk about Git and GitHub. So basically, uh, RStudio gives you the space to organize your code, to connect to data sources, iterate, share, and back up your code, and it just makes coding easier. And you'll see, you'll see how how our studio like answers to each of those things. It's not, if it's not apparent yet, it, it's okay. <laughs> we'll come to it. Okay, so I just wanted to cover um, some things um, to sort of show you the benefits of using our studio. So first, first off. The question of like, well, what else would I use with R? Um, and like when you installed R on your computer, like what was that about? Why would you ever do that without installing R Studio? So like just to show you what it would, what it sort of feels like to um, to go into R, right? Just base R. Um, this is what you get. You don't have to go with me, um, but just to demonstrate. You basically just get this Windows 3.1 looking screen here with a very, very basic console um, and no, no frills, no bells, no whistles. You can do a few things, um, but not much. And, and you know, it works, like it's, it's still R. Like you can, so if you remember, I did Alt uh, Dash before and that would do the assignment arrow. You can't do that with this, so you have to just, so, and it, and it doesn't type, you know, the ending parentheses when you, so like you can see it works. It's just um, not pleasant. And um, you, I, I can't imagine that you could do the same amount of work in this that you could in our studio. Okay, so I just wanted to to go over also at the ending of last week, we um, I said that you could just close our studio and don't worry about the code that we had done, like saving it anywhere or whatever. Um, so I just wanted to show you real quick. You can actually get that code back if you go to history, the history tab. Um, if you could go into our studio, I guess I could, <laughs> um, you could get into our studio and. If you're in the same project you were last time, if you use projects or if you don't use projects. <clears throat> um, but if you go into history, uh, you can see all of the commands that were sent to the console. So it doesn't save anything, like if you sent comments to the console, it doesn't save anything like that. It's just simply like, what did you tell R? Um, and it doesn't return the results or anything like that. So, I mean, just so you know. So the next thing I want to talk about is project-based workflows. Um, project-based workflows are highly recommended as a way to keep your work more reproducible. Um, they're used as a way of um, keeping like, like work together. Let me check questions real quick. I'll come back to questions in a second. Um, keep like work together. And then um, in, for, in our studio, you can actually have multiple projects open simultaneously and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but it's also useful, and this might not make sense yet, but it's also useful as a way of having a relevant working directory. Um, so like, you know, how if you're referring to a file anywhere in, in your system, 
if you have to like start at what the C drive is and then what folder to go in next and then what the folder to go in next, um, that can be um, not only tedious, but it can break, it can make your code less shareable between machines. Um, and so if you're working in projects, it helps you keep a, a consistent working directory, regardless of what computer you're on. So let's create one. Um, so if you're in, in our studio, you can go, oh, I see a hand. Is there a hand? Oh, Elizabeth, I think, wait. Can't be unmuted until they enter their pen. Put this in their pen. Um, sorry, Elizabeth. I don't know how to let you talk. Well, I'm just going to move on, um, and we can we can get back to um, we'll we'll stop for some questions when we um, after we've created a project. So if you go to File, and then New Project. You'll see there's three different ways you can sort of create a new project. So we're just going to do a new directory. And then again, you can create different kinds of projects. Um, you can, we, we're not even anywhere near this yet, but like you could create your own R package. Um, and this would help you set up the uh, correct sort of file folder structure to do that. Um, but we're just going to do new project. And we're just going to name it practice. And then we're going to, and um, for this, if you don't have create project as a subdirectory of, um, if you could make that your R directory, um, I think that is the, the most recommended way to do this um, because if otherwise your every project you create is going to get thrown into your my documents and that is hard to deal with I think so I put it under my R directory so um, and then don't check any of these I am actually going to check this one but you don't so you can just click create project um, wait. Actually, I should have named it different. I already have a project, a practice project. <laughs> so I'm going to do practice two or three. Whatever. Okay. So you should see, your screen should look like this. And now I'm gonna check for questions. Um, oh yeah, fine. yep, 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 thanks Elizabeth. And I'll come back to your, um, your other thing in a second. Okay. Control plus, okay. That should be better, I think. Okay, so. You'll notice that uh, there are no uh, files really here except this practice3.r proj. And that can be used as like if you wanted to make a shortcut onto your desktop for this, and, and if you use that, then any time that could be like how you open our studio and it would just open straight into this particular project. Whereas if you just open our studio, usually, I think it just opens like the last project that you had open, which is usually fine for me. So I never use these things, but um, if you were to find this file in your file tree, your file structure, um, that is what, how you could use it. So if I go into practice three, and then if I were to double click that, and this wasn't already open, it would open this. So that's what that file is. And that's all they give you really um, to start with. Um, so we have we have created our first project. Um, so 
The kinds of things that you would keep in a project are scripts and our markdown documents and folders and images. And you can create a shiny app. You could do um, a bunch of different things. Um, so, but we're just gonna create a simple script um, since we're just practicing. So you could create a script in multiple different kinds of ways. You can either go to this, um, this icon in the very top left and choose our script, or you can push um, Control Shift N to create a script, or you can go to File, New File, and Our Script. And there's probably like other ways. I don't know. Um, you really just need a way to do it. So just create a script, however you want to do that. Um, and then, so what, what I was thinking we would do is um, just sort of start where we left off last time where we we had uh, really looked uh, pretty deeply at vectors. Um, and then right at the end, we sort of threw in the uh, information that we were gonna, uh, that also a thing called data frames exists. So um, we're gonna start there. And I'm just gonna show you sort of the difference between coding in a script versus coding in the console. So last time, all we did is code in the console. And um, it, it was like not super elegant or anything because you're just talking to R and your commands are just landing in the history and that's it. Um, it's, not meant, it's not meant to be like some thing, great thing you're gonna go run again or whatever. So a script though can be something that you run uh, over and over again with different data, you can share it, you can do any kinds of things with it. it the whole point is like, you wanna come back to it and, and run it again, or it'll document what, you, you, what you've done. Um, so like I said, coding in here is different. So commenting is a big um, plus uh, as far as uh, coding anything really. But in R, the way you comment is you um, put a pound sign and then anything after that on your line is a comment. So this comment. Um, and so you can, um, yeah, it's highly encouraged to, to be pretty good about your commenting. And you wanna talk about not necessarily what your code is doing, but like why you're doing that. Um, so let's let's talk about um, data frames then and the MT cars um, data set that comes with base R. So if you type in MT cars or MTC even, and then you get the um, the prompt here, you can hit that. Um, and now if you if you wanted to add a comment after that, you can just base and then more comments. And so you could run this line and it would just run the empty cars business, right? Because this is just commenting. But so how do we run this? Um, if you were in the console and you hit enter, it would send empty cars you know, to R and it would be like, okay, I know what that is. And it would spit out the answer. But since you're in a script, um, you have more time to kind of, you know, build what it is that you wanna run and then you can run any set of the code that you're interested in running. So that's why I didn't run anything at this time because I just hit enter and I haven't run it yet. So uh, in order to run it, I can do just like creating the script, there's a bunch of different ways to do that. Um, I can do control enter and that'll send it. I can just select this and do control enter, that'll send it. I can have my cursor anywhere on this line and click the run button and that'll send it. Um, I, I think I can have it above there. Yep, that'll send it. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing I can do is if I wanted to send the whole entire um, code, script, like all the code in the script, to run all at the same time, I could hit source and it would just run the code and um, without sort of giving you um, 
the the feedback from the console it would the console would just kind of be a lot quieter but it would just run the whole script we can talk about that later we don't have enough here to to do anything with source right now but that's yet another way uh, to run the the code so we're going to create some vectors and um so that we can have something to you know in our environment and it's going to help me explain some things so go ahead and um create the following so we're gonna we're gonna say um we want to know how wide is empty cars and so the the function you would need for that is n call oh wait And then I'm going to hit control enter. Oh, wait, I can't type today. Okay. And so, okay, is this actually a good, um, a good point to point uh, to show you something in regards to how, what, like when you would use a script versus when you would use a console. So I want to always have this access to this later. Let's say this is going to be real important. But I don't want to see this anymore because it reminds me that I can't spell very well and it's just going to get in the way. So I would come to the console then and do rm and how wid, right? And like get rid of that. Um, and I wouldn't want to put the rm up here because I don't, I'm not, there's nothing that I'm going to need to correct if I ever come back to the script. So I'm actually probably a good mistake to make because um, it sort of shows the difference as to when you would use script, like a script, and when just to use the console. Um, so let's put in another one. Um, how long empty cars? And that would be n row empty cars. And control enter. <laughs> Thank you. And I still misspell it. Um, yeah. So we're going to do it again, the uh, whole RM thing. OK. There we go. We have two perfect vectors <laughs> um, of valid words that are in the dictionary. Um, and then we're going to do one called um, Names, oops, empty cars. And that one is the function name is names. Um, these couldn't be more obvious. Okay. So now we have three vectors. One of them is a character vector, the other two are integer, integer vectors. Um, and that's what we wanted. And then um, so we're going to we're going to get to where we will use those in a second. But I just wanted to show you some more ways to make uh, scripts um, like to organize them better. And this is another R Studio thing that exists. So if you do control shift R. You should get a section label. And you can name the section whatever you um, whatever you want. It's kind of like title ish. Um, so I'm just going to type with much cooler things in it. And what that does is it adds um, a section header there that's basically a comment and then fills it in the rest, the rest of the way until up until the margin, which is I have set it at 80 and that's in the, the options. Um, but I don't know if you can see this barely sort of line I have. Um, you probably don't have that. I remember setting that specifically so I could always know where it is. Um, and we can go through that later. But point is, um, we now have a section header. And then we can um, add some code under there. And I'll show you how the section header kind of works. So the first thing we're going to do is um, if you type VIE and then you see the view uh, function there and just let it capitalize that V for whatever reason and then put in um, empty cars. Um, and if you run that, 
you should see another tab pop up that lets you look at your data um, in a kind of Excel-esque kind of way. Um, and this is super useful um, because as you're going through life, you have a really long script and you wanna see like, okay, at this point, what does my data look like before I've done anything else? You can you know, uh, iterate through your code and then like look at everything to see how it looks. The other cool thing about it is you can actually search in, uh, in that data frame for stuff. Something that I actually literally found out today, and this must be new with this version of our studio, is the other thing. The other thing that you can do with this is, um, is if you click this filter thing here, you can, you can get a histogram of what is in that column. Um, and, and just for like a very quick, like lookup kind of thing so that like if you're in your your data and you're you want to see like what dates right like are included in the exit date because you know you ran the um your reporting and you meant for you know it to be a certain date range you shouldn't see any exit dates past a certain date right so that can be really useful um to see like sort of what the answers are um, or what the you know the values are. So anyway, that's super cool. You can also um, punch it out to a new window if you want. But anyway, I use this a lot. So um, anyway, back to section of cool things. Um, we're gonna do. You can also do a, a old school histogram um, of empty cars. And then that comes up in the bottom right, um, just as like, I'm not trying to pass these off as like something you would ever put out, right? Like these are not meant to be fancy uh, <laughs> graphics or something like this, but it, it is a good way to like, if you're checking your data and you wanna make sure that it kind of makes sense um, as to the range of what you're seeing in a particular variable, this is a really good way to do that. Okay, so um, as a final thing in this script, we're going to, um, we're so proud of this list of uh, column names for empty cars. And so we're gonna write it out to a CSV. There is a package called Write Excel, I think, where you can, um, you can write a data, data set to an Excel file. Um, and I've used it and it's great, but I don't have any, packages installed right now um, in this thing. So we're just we're just using base R right now. So I'm going to use write.csv. And then I'm going to do names empty cars because that's what I want to write. And then I'm going to tell it what the file name is going to be. And if I had so if I had a file structure in here um, like if I had a folder named data, right? Um, and I wanted this file to land in there, I would write data slash and then um, call names empty cars dot csv. And, um, and then I would do that and it would land my uh, csv file into that folder. Uh, but since I don't, I'm gonna just do it this way. And you'll see that the CSV uh, has shown up here and directly in the um, your project's main directory. So the root directory of your project. And you can see uh, what that is, is like home and then R and then the name of the project. All right, so we're gonna, um, you'll notice this is a, a script that hasn't been saved, so th th it doesn't exist yet, really. We're just doing this right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click Save and um, name it Week 2 Script. And now you see it landed also in the, um, in the root directory of the project. 
Are there any questions? Okay. I got you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Don't go back. Uh, do we need to have an empty line between each line of script? Okay. You don't need to have an empty line between each line of script. And that was a really good question. I just do it um, for aesthetics. Uh, just because I like the way it looks and I can read it better and concentrate better, but you can do it however you want. Thanks, Lady. Okay, so we have a script here and we have uh, output a CSV. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, installing packages. We heard from, um, is it Tino? Is that his name? I'm sorry. No. Yes, that was correct. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, the, the, you know, like uh, installing packages can, can sometimes be um, hard and your, um, oops, your um, computer might not uh, cooperate. Um, and instead of having everybody install packages right in the middle of class, because then we were going to devolve into um, a lot of troubleshooting, I think the most the most important package to HMIS admins, and I had to think on this a lot, is dplyr. Um, and so what I want us to do is in the console, because you, you only need to install it once on a computer, um, we'll do install dot packages and then if you do dpl and wait for a second it will um, pull up some packages that they know of that have that starts with dpl and i want you to click on dplyr and then it will put it in quotes for you um, and for whatever reason when you do install that packages you have to surround it in quotes um, i don't know why but you do and so just kind of uh, click that and run it. And now you've installed dplyr on your computer. So if you, um, you know, install R and R Studio on, let's say, your laptop, um, that's separate from the one you're on, say, um, you would have to do that again, right? Um, if you were to try to run some of your code, if it's using dplyr functions. So in your, so when you, since you only have to do that once per computer, you would do that in your console. Because there's no reason to keep installing it over and over again. Um, generally, at the top of your scripts is where you call your libraries and or you call the what like what packages you're, you're planning to use in the code that's in that script. So up at the top um, of the script, I would do library and then dplyr. And when you call the library, you don't need the quotes. Again, I don't understand why, but if you've installed the, the, the package, um, but you haven't called the library, you can't yet use the functions. So if I were to look up, so one of the functions in dplyr is called mutate. So if I were to look up mutate and the help, it's they're, they're like, I don't know what that is. Uh, maybe try this other like help thing. Um, and so once I run this library dplyr, it loads the, the dplyr library. And then if I look it up, it's like, oh yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> Rude. Why is it doing that? It's corrupt. Well, normally <laughs> it would have, oh my, what? Well, Usually it works. <laughs> um, I apologize, but let's see if um, select works. Yeah, that whole thing is corrupted, rude. But and normally it comes up over here and, and the help documentation is really good. Um, but either way, at least it recognizes that um, particular function name, right? At least it's not like, we don't know what that is. So um, you can see the difference of when you've called the, the library and you have it. So all of what we're doing right now is um, part of a session, an R session. And what's in our environment are these three vectors and the, 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 um, the dplyr package is loaded into the environment as well. It doesn't say that here, but it is um, because you ran this. 
Mm -hmm. Let me see what's next. Sorry. Oh yeah. So the way you, um, okay. Yeah. I was going somewhere with that. So if you do LS and then empty parens, it will tell you all of the data frames and vectors and functions that you've created, say, um, it will list all those for you. Um, and the reason I, I bring that up is because there's a sort of, sort of like when would you code in a script and when would you code in the console? There's another question of when do you just clear the environment versus when do you restart R? Um, and so usually the answer is, if you read the experts, is restart R. <laughs> um, but there are times when you just want to clear the environment. So if, if you use what we know about the RM uh, function, you can clear the environment by doing RM and then list equal and then LS like that. And that will clear all of these things, all of these um, vectors here. And if you had anything else in the environment, it will clear those. But what it doesn't do is clear the fact that you have dplyr loaded. dplyr is still loaded. Um, I wish I had a great way of showing that without being this corrupt thing. But um, but yeah, so you're, you're in a state and you feel like you're starting with a fresh R session, but you aren't. Um, and so that's where uh, the, the help usually is like, you should just restart R. So how do you restart R? If you do control shift F10, it'll restart R. And of course you can also go to um, session and do restart R that way. And if you forget the um, key, you know, combination, um, you can see it, see it there. Okay. Okay, so um, I just want to put these things back in the um, in the environment. Wait, why did I want to do this? I don't think I need to. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, it's updating packages. So these packages are maintained um, by well, it's free and open source software. So they're not all maintained by like the same person. Um, our studio as a company actually maintains a lot of, the, of these packages. They're all, um, they sort of started and are maintaining all the our, the tidyverse packages that Tino is talking about. Um, so they, as such, as since they're being maintained, which is what we want, um, there are updates to them, of course. Um, and so my practice is every week to update my packages. So in the way I do that, as I go to tools and then check for package updates, and then it looks for any of the, um, it tells me what, what version I have installed and which one is available. And then if I'm like, wait, I don't know, I really depend on that, what did they change? I can click on any of these things and see what was changed. So I do that once a week, although I didn't do it to this week yet because I want to be able to see this. And then it also helps to keep R and R Studio updated, although R doesn't really get updated very much because it's so like big and so many people use it, they have to be really careful. Um, but I, I would say to do it monthly, but I can't feel bad saying that because I, I don't do that. I don't keep up with it very much, um, but I really should. So, so with all the things that we just learned and talked about in regards to the session that we're in and uh, restarting and clearing your environment, um, I, I am going, I'm going to suggest um, that you go to tools and global options and um, this workspace section here, if you, um, if you, you should, what the recommendation is, <laughs> it's to uncheck restore.rdata into workspace at startup and to switch the save work 
space to um, our data on exit to never. And of course, it's your computer and you can do this the way you want, but um, you should, um, the reasoning behind doing this is that you should save code that works every time. So, so you want to write every script assuming that it will be run in a fresh R, R process. So if we have if we have this script and you're calling the dplyr package and you run it and then you create another script but you forget to call the library and your other script is using dplyr functions that other script on its own won't work if you run it by itself in a fresh r session because you haven't called this library so if you're if you're clearing this if you're having our studio clear this for you every time you close our studio and come back in then you're not going to forget to make sure that all your scripts can be run in a fresh r session are there any questions about that oh, oh there have been questions i'm sorry um Okay, so it's like view needed a capital V. Yes, y yeah, you have to do view with a capital V. And that's why, so when I type a um, function name that I'm not super um, sure exactly how it needs to be written, um, I stop after the first three letters and wait for the, um, auto autocomplete to come up and then I I do it that way if I possibly can um and so yeah for whatever reason the view one is capital V and like that's another reason I just wait for the autocomplete because I can't keep track of these things um and R is very um case sensitive um scroll up and show the install player install package maybe um i'm sorry i don't i don't know um in packages you'll see a check mark for the loaded packages yes lazaro lazaro um so if you go to the packages um tab you can see what is loaded and you can see um that dplyr is not loaded um, because I restarted the R session. Thank you. <laughs> um, yep, that's a good point. So um, there's another question about um, how to get your um, your coding environment to look the way you want. If you go to global options and then appearance, you can um, choose any of these editor themes and um, fonts or whatever else. Okay. Um, so we have a little bit more time and I really wanted to show you all this because it's super fun. Um, oh wait, okay, it's in my other project. Okay, so this is some data that I copied from a random Titanic data set. I just went in there, grabbed um some data out of there it's not even complete but you know sometimes we need to we need to do um some things like this in nhmis land so clearly r is super upset about this it's just like what <laughs> what is this so what we're going to do is we're going to um use the the features of our studio to make this um a legitimate uh way of getting this data into R. So let's just do Titanic. I'm just going to um, save all of these um, as members of a vector named Titanic. So I'm going to do um, C and then I'm going to select all the way to here and do uh, parentheses. R is still mad and the reason is this, this text has to be enclosed in quotes. And you need commas between everything. All of that needs to be done. 
And I could do it manually, but that's super tedious. So the way you can do this is if you're on a Windows machine, you can push the Alt key. Um, if you're on a Mac, I think it's the Options key. But if you um, push the Alt key and you see your cursor turn into a plus, then you can drag your mouse down to the bottom and let go. And you can see this vertical cursor. And it's flashing right in the space where uh, we need a comma. So I'm going to um, type a comma. And it added a comma on it for every one of those cursors. Yay, super cool. So then uh, R is still mad, though, <laughs> um, because the text isn't surrounded in quotes. So um, if you hit your home key, you'll see the, the cursors go to the beginning of the line. So then if, you, um, if you're familiar with, like, super familiar with, like, what? navigating around like Word and such with just keyboard stuff, you're kind of at an advantage uh, for this, this particular step. But um, anyway, if you do shift control right arrow, <laughs> you can select each of those, you know, the first sort of word of that line. And then if you do shift, uh, you know, if you do your quotes, it's going to surround all of those in quotes. And then R is still mad because we're missing a comma between that text and the next number. And our cursor just happens to be right there where we need a comma. So you can go ahead and type a comma. And then you just have a couple of things, like little manual things to do. Like this one didn't have, you had a null in there. So we don't need that comma. And then I didn't do this one because I didn't want the, the parentheses to get all messed up in there. So I'm just going to do that one manually and done. And so if we run this, we, uh, that's another manual thing I have to do, is surround age in quotes. You have to do that manually. Um, because otherwise, it's thinking you're, you're referring to another vector named age, right? So if you put in quotes, it knows that you're, you're just trying to put this text in as a member of its own. So then you run it, and now you have that vector named Titanic. Um, and it's pretty cool. And then um, one last thing before we uh, go back to the slides is um, these, I, I wanted to show you these uh, section headers are like, you can roll them up. So if I um, collapse them all, you can see them like that. And then you can like open one up like this. And then another thing you can do with those um, section headers is if you do this um, like, arrow thing at the bottom, it shows all of the different sections that you've named. And you can jump to them if you want. Right. So anyway, I hope that was um, that was not too confusing. Um, so OK, so if you try to open, uh, you're trying to write the CSV. Condition warning message. Okay, we'll 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 talk about that later. So I'm going to go back to the the slides and uh, talk about the homework for next time. Um, the homework is basically going to be around um, Git and GitHub. So if you can um, install Git on the same computer that you have R in R Studio on. Uh, that would be uh, ideal. And then if you don't already have an account with some like Git platform, like GitHub or GitLab, then um, you can go sign up for a free GitHub account. Um, you can choose whichever platform you want, but I'm going to be demoing on GitHub because just because that's what I use. And then the second part of the homework is um, takes a little bit of explaining. Um, so you're, if you're an HMIS admin, your vendor um, is supposed to have an, a, a HUD CSV export available. Um, it may not be free. Um, someone then try to charge you for it. But um, they have to have one. 
that's available. Um, and that export uses some specifications that were created by HUD. Um, and you can get those here. And, and all of this is um, going to be here, right here. Um, on the on the GitHub page, you know where where we keep all of this, um, so you'll be able to get that. Actually, I can just put this into the chat. That's where that is, um, and it's this one. No, no, no. This one. So FY 2020 HMIS CSV format specifications version 1.8. Um, that is just something for you to look into. And this is for, you won't need this like for next week. You, uh, I'm gonna be talking about this in week four. So, but I'm bringing up it up now because in case there's anybody on the call that doesn't already know what this is and you may need to like contact your vendor to find out like, how do you find this and do they have it? And you know, what is the deal with it? So I'm just trying to give you sort of an extra week's heads up on that because um, in week four, I'm going to be showing you the tidyverse, and we're going to um, use we're going to use our CSVs um, to sort of do some some coding um, using tidyverse packages, and it's going to be great because you'll be seeing your own data. So um, it should be it should be really um, worth it to find that. Um, again, if you're so inclined, two ways to donate. Um, if you're getting a lot out of this. Or even if you're not, it's not expected, just so you know. Um, and then the next session will be um, talking about GitHub. So I'm just going to check for questions. Okay. I think I think that's all I can really. Oh, I sent <laughs> I sent that link as your answer, Tino. I apologize. Oh. Okay. I think I've answered all the questions that I can right now. Um, and so I will talk to you all next week and I'm, I'll put up the recording for this soon um, for anybody that had to miss it or that if you want us to review something. Um, and I appreciate your, your engagement. Thanks everybody.